I'm very, very pleased to be bringing you guys another Nordhaven. This is a Nordhaven 57, it's from 2004, and it is just a fantastic chunk of boat, as Nordhavens always are. And it's great to see these out of the water, actually, and get a real impression of just how much boat is in the water. It's a displacement cruising boat, and you can see, actually, it's virtually down onto the floor. It's just on these blocks here, but if I stand next to it, all of this, so over six foot of the boat, is in the water. And while we're on the outside, I'll show you a few other things as well that are worth looking at. These are the stabilizers, they're fin stabilizers. So these actually pivot up here. So as the boat rocks, they can push against the water and hold it steady. Very deep keel. And this is interesting. This is a keel cooler. What this does is it means that the main engine, the cooling doesn't come from outside of the boat. It's a closed water system and it uses that then to cool the water a little bit like the radiator on a car. Also back here, there's a stern thruster. There's a bow thruster as well, of course up at the front and then this one's got twin engines it's got the main engine and you can see the propeller for it here but also a wing engine so this is a get your home we'll see these in more detail of course when we go on board but you can see this is actually a folding propeller so once this starts to spin centrifugal force pulls those blades out and then you've got forward motion but that is the main prop that's what normally drives the boat that is just a backup just to keep you going if ever you had a problem anyway let's go and have a look on board because that's always the most interesting bit so we'll come round here. I'm just going to show you one more thing, actually, which is quite interesting, which is this little circular section here. You can take that out so that the rudder can be turned at 90 degrees and the prop shaft can be withdrawn out through it. Otherwise, you can't get the course of the prop shaft out. Anyway, let's head on up and we will do, of course, the full tour. These are always a fascinating boat. So we'll step on here, bathing platform at the back. There's a barbecue, in fact, underneath here. That's just in under there. And then you've got this big open deck. Now, they do different versions of these. They do the wide cabin version and a narrow cabin with two side decks. So this one's got the side deck down the outside. We'll have a look at that as we go around the decks. But there isn't one on this side. And what that does is it maximises the volume inside the boat, which for a long-distance cruiser, of course, makes an awful lot of sense. You've got a sink out here as well. And then you've also got engine controls here and bow and stern thruster controls and a rudder control and that means you can control the boat from here brilliant of course if you're stern to berthing you can handle everything from right here and you can watch the boat in anyway we'll head on inside first of all there's a flybridge on this one as well we'll cover that we're going to go into everywhere and we'll step in here first of all and this is dare i say it classic nordhaven with the lovely teak everywhere this big open area right across here you can also feel the width that you've got in here by not having that side deck. It just makes for a really big, lovely saloon area. And your galley is on the same level, of course. You might be spending you know, days or weeks at a time out at sea in this. And so to have this all as one big social area, have all the cooking done up here, that works really well. There's a wine cooler on this one. That's over there. And then you've got the galley here. Now, what's interesting about this layout is I mentioned, of course, that there's no side deck on this side. What's quite clever is there is a side deck then that starts just here. We'll see that better because we're going to come back in this way, but there's a door there. And the idea of this, of course, is if you're berthed on this side, you can still get out and get the boat tied up. But anyway, let's take a look at this galley sink. As you can see, this along here is all, of course, storage in places like this. You've also got a really good size oven over here there's a microwave as well up at the top and that little fellow there that's a trash compactor so that means you can crush all of your trash again for long distance cruising that's pretty essential and then there's a massive fridge like so again very much needed and you've got a freezer underneath it now the thing with nordhaven if you've watched my videos for a while you've seen nordhavens before but there's very much a little ship feel to the entire boat and certainly as you step up here into the wheelhouse this really does feel like being on a ship you've got this wonderful stid helm seat you've got the dash that comes all the way around and instrumentation along the top as well seat here so people can come and enjoy the ride when the boat's underway and a doorway there we'll see the outside of that as we go around the decks in a little while over here this is an area for charts and you can see you can keep all your books or your charts or whatever else in there and across here you've got communication radios, you've got loud hailer, you've got screens across here and more navigational equipment over on this side. Autopilot is here as well. Engine controls are just here. 
and those bow and stern thrusters, they're controlled. That's what those fellows there are for. This here is part of the Fruner system, so this is for things like radar and plotting and all that kind of thing. Now, forward of here is the lower accommodation. So, if we come around here, another door out onto the outside. We'll see that again, as I say, when we go around the outside of the boat in a little while. But this takes us on down. You'll notice I've kept my shoes on in this boat because there's no carpets and it's a bitterly cold day. So, they were absolutely fine. I said, keep your shoes on. <laughs> Don't freeze your feet. So, if we come back here, this then is the master cabin. It's in the centre of the boat, or as close to the centre of the boat as you can get on the lower deck. So that, again, when you're doing long distance cruising, you've got much less motion in here in terms of the boat rocking or the bow coming up and down and so on. It's an ensuite cabin, so if you can move on to this side, that's the heads, and then there's a separate shower area just in there. And then the other thing we have in here is the laundry facilities. So in here is the washer and the dryer. Storage, as you'd expect, well, that's plentiful. So you've got storage here, 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 all the way around the cabin, basically, up along the top, drawers down over here. So, so you've got plenty of places to put everything away. And if we come on forward from here, there are two more cabins. So there's a bunk cabin over on this side. And again, that's got storage tucked away in places like that. So that's a hanging locker, for example. And also you can see it down under the bed, there's drawers and so forth. And then we head on forward, a very nice cabin then up here in the bow. So double bed in this one, again, tons of storage about the place. Up in areas like this, you can see a big hanging locker. And then all the way around here, that's all storage. And there's access out onto the deck just there. So that is the lower deck accommodation. These two share heads, and that is over on this side. So again, toilet there, your sink, storage and behind the mirror, and then you've got a separate shower area. One thing I will point out in here, which is quite interesting, is all the portholes are toughened glass. They're very, very strong, but you'll notice that there's a shutter over them. So if you're doing serious offshore work and it's really stormy, that can come down over it and give you extra strength there if it's ever needed. Not something you'd use on a regular basis, but it's there if ever it was required. And in fact, there are more of those storm shutters, and I'll show you those when we go out onto the decks. So, back out through here. I'll just show you in here, just as we're going past. That is just access to systems. So plumbing, electrics, all that kind of thing is all designed so that you can reach it. So come back up through here. And I've been working out the route around this one so that we can see everything without going back on ourselves too much. And I reckon the next place to go then is up here because this is internal access up onto the flybridge. So that's here. There is the radar arch there. So that's where all your radar and so on. In fact, if you come right to the back, you'll see that. There we go. Radar's up there, the track vision, so that's for your satellite TV, antenna, all that kind of stuff is up there. It's also a dry exhaust, so the exhaust actually exits just out through there. Tender storage, as you can see, so this is like a boat deck here. 60 horsepower engine on this one as well, so a decent sized tender. And then you've got the crane there to lift it on and off with. And if we head up here, this then is the upper helm, so you've got seating around here and a table, and then this is where you can helm the boat from out in the fresh air. We are up at uh, Hamble Point Marina at the moment, which is the home of Nordhaven Europe, who very kindly organised this tour. And you can see there's another Nordhaven, in fact, just over there. So, bow stern thrusters again, searchlight control, big ship's wheel, and then the engine control is over there. But you really do get a sense of what a little ship this is when you stand up here. And in fact, you get that same sense when you move around the whole boat. So we'll head back that is the sliding door that comes across, so you can, of course, close that right off when the weather's not so good or you're leaving the boat. This is a life raft just here, and if you come right to the back, you will see there are steps down here that drop us back down to the cockpit. So what I'm going to do is take you down this way, and then we can take a little walk up the side. Now, again, that sense of the 
little ship feeling with these really high bulwarks here and this overhang just fantastic big chunky rails to hang on to and also these are fair leads and cleats so when you tie the boat up you can tie it off on there that is a door that comes out directly opposite the galley and then there's a side door so that if you're berthed alongside a key you can step straight out if we head on further up again this one is the door next to the helm so as you can see that is where we were earlier when we were looking at the helm but we'll carry on forward again there's a portuguese bridge on this now the portuguese bridge is this access that's sheltered in behind here so you're behind this bulkhead but of course there is access from here so we can open that that clips back and that takes us up onto the foredeck that is the hatch that was above the cabin that forward cabin that we looked at and then right up on the front you've got your anchor winch electrically controlled of course and there are twin anchors on this boat you can see there's one big anchor there and then a slightly smaller anchor just there so some serious anchoring kit and it just all feels so solid doesn't it let's take a look back look at that that's pretty impressive isn't it back here then we've got in here That's just a deck locker, so you can keep all kinds of stuff in there, ropes and other bits and pieces. Clip those back down. And then what we do this time is walk around here. This is interesting. What these are, are storm shutters for the saloon windows. So those big windows on the side of the saloon, we'll see those in fact in a second, you can close those off in really seriously stormy conditions. You can completely protect those from big waves. And it's a proper offshore thing, this. And that's an EPIRB. That's a distress beacon so that in a worst case scenario, you can float that off and it will alert through the satellite system that you're in distress. There's another doorway here back into the helm. What we're going to do is head down this side. And this is where you can see that the saloon extends out. And that's what gives you so much space in there. But there is a door here, so as I say, if you are berthed on this side, you can still access this area perfectly well. But it does give you that huge beam and all this space in here. So the last thing to look at then is engines. And they're down through here. Again, classic Nordhaven in terms of the access. That one there, incidentally, that's where all your crockery is kept. And then there's drawers down underneath that. That's the door out onto the side deck over on that side that we passed. And then down here, all the electrical systems are controlled from here. So you've got the main battery isolator switches and then all the circuit breakers are down here. So 240 volt systems, 120 volt systems, 12 volt systems, everything all controlled from there. However, the bit we really want to see always on a Nordhaven is the engine space. Take a look at this. absolutely fantastic exactly what you'd expect to find on one of these boats so fuel tanks are outboard on either side in fact you can see there are sight gauges here obviously there are fuel gauges but you can come in here and you can see exactly how much fuel is in either tank and then these are changeover valves so it's tank supply and where the fuel is actually going so which engine which generator and so forth and this then is the main engine this is a john deere it's a 340 horsepower engine it's given the boat about 10 to 11 knots flat out cruising then at about eight knots and that's giving you then at eight knots about three and a half thousand miles of range as i say it is a proper transatlantic and this boat has done it it's a very simple system you've got engine here gearbox on the back and then that thick shaft that we saw going down and out through the keel but what you also have back here is a wing engine so that other propeller we saw the folding propeller on a separate shaft that's connected to this it's completely independent it's an 85 horsepower engine obviously it doesn't give you the same kind of speed but it will give you about five or six knots it's a worst case get your home scenario if the main engine was to stop and it couldn't be repaired that will keep you going and it's completely separate even the shaft and the propeller as we saw is separate so that even if you got something around the propeller and you couldn't clear it you'd have a completely separate propeller to use also down here this is a water maker, so you can create your own water en route from seawater. And then behind me, there are two generators. There's this one here, 
which I think I'm right in saying is a 20 kilowatt, and then a smaller load generator back here. So again, that's giving you backup, or if you're just running small loads, you don't have to run the main generator if you don't want to. We'll head on back, because there's always plenty to see down here. These are trace inverters over here, and then if you go right to the back, then you've got a lazarette back here. And that fellow over there, the white box, that's an Atlas power converter. That means that when you plug into shore power, you can convert wherever you are in the world to the kind of power that you need on the boat. And also back here are isolator switches for the batteries and then a load of storage, as you can see. One interesting thing is that steel rod. Let me come right back in. So this is the steering gear back here. That's what you can see. So that's controlled, obviously, by the steering wheels at both helm positions and the autopilot. But that is an emergency tiller. In an absolute worst case scenario, you've lost all steering in the middle of the Atlantic. You can actually get that out, clamp it on and hand steer the boat. You wouldn't want to. But of course, if that's your only choice, then it can be done. And it means, again, that you can just keep going. And that is the whole point of these boats. They're absolutely designed to keep running no matter what, whatever the sea conditions, whatever you throw at it. These will just keep on moving. You've got a hatch here, so you've got access directly out to the deck. And you can see that's what that step there is in fact for. But we'll come back this way and back into the engine space. Another interesting thing, in fact, while we're in here, is you can see up on the ceiling, these hatches here, they're actually in the saloon floor. So Again, if you had a serious problem you're in the middle of nowhere and you get into port, it means you can get these open, get the floor up, and you could, in a worst case scenario, get any of these engineering parts, even the engine, lifted up and then out through the back of the boat. It's all proper, super practical, designed to keep you going. Look, it's even got a little vice on the bench here. It's all about self-sufficiency. Fuel filters up here on the front. That is very, very impressive, isn't it? Awesome. Let's head on back out. Pass this switch panel. You can see there's a door here to close this off. We'll come back in through here. And I think we'll finish up back at the helm. Here we go. So that's it. Huge thanks to Nordhaven Europe for organising that one. We love to see these Nordhavens on Aquaholic. I know how much you guys like them, so I hope you've enjoyed that tour. Let me know what you think in the comments, and we look forward to catching you on another one very soon. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.